Craters are of great interest to us because they're like time tunnels. Going down into a crater allows us access to older material that otherwise would be buried. So we want to find out what Mars was like in the ancient past. And our rovers are robotic field geologists and they can tell us what the geologic environment was like if they get access to this older material. This has been a 21 month odyssey for opportunity. Ever since we left Endurance Crater um, almost two years ago, we've been driving towards Victoria Crater with the intention of eventually going inside the crater because we realized from orbital imagery that this was the best, highest value uh, science target for the rover after we climbed out of Endurance Crater. This is not the first crater we've entered. We went into Endurance Crater and made uh, several significant discoveries there, and we want to compare those discoveries to the discoveries that we can make in Victoria. What we've been doing is a partial circumnavigation of the crater rim, looking for places to go in and getting a good look at the crater. You know, much like coming up to the rim of the Grand Canyon and then hiking along the rim of the Grand Canyon, looking at the features and looking what's exciting down in the crater and what can we get to. Our path into the crater will be driven by where we think it's safe to drive the rover. And we've been looking at the images not only collected by the rover itself, but the high-rise imagery that comes from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. And looking at that to identify a safe path that has reasonable slopes and well-characterized terrain. We, we don't want loose sandy soil, we prefer to drive on, on hard, rocky material. There's always the risk that something could happen to the rover, either because of the terrain of the crater or the rover itself has a, has a failure of some sort. If we lose a wheel, you know, Spirit lost functionality in one of her wheels um, over a year ago. It's possible that Opportunity could lose functioning of a wheel at any moment. And we've had several challenges along the way. You know, the rover got partially embedded, uh, which took several weeks to extract the rover from this, uh, this soft, sandy material. And then we had uh, the right front steering actuator jammed on us. And then we had the degradation to its robotic arm. And all these um, you know, were roadblocks, in a sense, uh, to us getting to Victoria Crater. The rovers are, are getting older, although Opportunity is in very good health. But it's kind of like, you know, sending your grandmother down the steep slope, you know, you think she can make it, but you're a little concerned she might slip and fall and uh, injure herself. So that's how we're kind of approaching this. We're even willing to accept the possibility that we could go in and not ever get back out again, but, but spend the rest of the rover's life inside the crater doing great science and exploring the interior of the crater. We've looked at several candidate places to go in, uh, Duck Bay turned out to be the, the best of all of them because of its shallow slopes and, and well-characterized terrain. Um, the others were intriguing, but they were more dangerous. Um, so we think that Duck Bay is our best shot. We've done a lot of testing, both here on the ground, and we have a lot of experience from Mars on driving on steep slopes and driving into craters. So we feel confident that we can drive opportunity safely into uh, Victoria Crater and safely back out again. I mean, there's still a lot of fight left in these rovers in terms of being able to accomplish uh, exploration and, and uh, achieve great discoveries on the surface of Mars. We've traveled 21 months to get to Victoria Crater, which uh, can be argued is our most exciting adventure to date for the rovers. It's clearly the biggest object we've ever visited, and the fact that we can now explore it not only horizontally but vertically uh, is a very exciting opportunity. Now we're here and we're ready to go in.